Martin, also known as Teacher's Brain. You can find me at Teacher's Paid Teachers. I am here with my best tips so that you can have a successful year. These are tips that I wish I had when I first started teaching and then maybe my start to my career in education would have been a little more successful. So tip number one, get your pencils. My first tip is patience. It sounds simple, but when you first start teaching, my first job was pre-kindergarten, so when one kid had to go to the bathroom, they all had to go to the bathroom. When little Susie wanted my attention, they all wanted my attention. Of course, the office, at the same time that Susie wet herself, <laughs> then the office would call and they would want me to go and pick up the intercom phone and at the same time I'd have a parent standing at the door who wanted my attention right away because they had to have a conference right then and there instead of signing up for one. So it was very overwhelming and I had a little bit of anxiety at times and one person taught me one trick to breathe. I know it sounds simple but honestly it takes a little bit of a skill to breathe successfully to make yourself feel more calm and at peace. You can find uh, videos on YouTube for successful breathing techniques and you can also maybe join a yoga class or something. That's what I did. So when I get upset or feeling overwhelmed I breathe in, breathe out, and move on. I even have a sign in my yard that helps me remember to do this and I also have a vision board which is totally not done yet and um, don't judge me because it's it's uh, incomplete but I do have it on my vision board so that I can remember those steps. I also have taught first grade and kindergarten and second grade and I had to learn new skills for tattletaling. Come on, raise your hand. You know this has been a problem in your classroom. There are so many items out on the internet to help you with tattletaling. I have um, one unit that I do with the students in order to know whether or not they're helpful or they're hurtful. Where the kids will go and if they're being hurtful I send them to Officer McTattle and they can go and tell the officer who is just a poster hanging on the wall what is upsetting them and sometimes they just need to talk and get it out and get it off their chest and then they're fine. Sometimes they'll find out that they should have told me something so I keep it close to my desk not only because it's entertaining to to see the kids go talk to them but also because I want to know if there's a serious problem like uh, Bobby just stabbed somebody with a pencil. I say Bobby because I've never had a Bobby in my class so um, no offense to the Bobbies out there. Tip number two is to be fit, all right? It's very important for you to take time to exercise. Seriously, we are around cake and cookies and candy all day long as educators, and um, now things have got to change. So you need to find either school walking groups, some other teachers that wanna walk with you after school, or maybe um, you could sponsor a running club that would keep you active. You could get together with some teachers and watch a video, well, do more than watch them. Actually do the video, and don't go out to dinner afterwards. I'm guilty of that. Um, also, you could maybe play hopscotch with your kids during recess instead of grading papers. Um, remember, being fit equals high energy and excitement, and nobody wants a boring teacher. Mm -mm. Nobody wants a boring teacher at all. We are competing with the best video games out there. We have to up our own game. If I am talking about decomposing numbers, decomposing the word itself is depressing, okay? Not many people can get excited about decomposing. However, when you are teaching kids about it, it would help for you to make it a little more exciting. You could put a song to it. I do um, decompose, decompose, break it on down, break it on down, decompose, decompose, break it on down, break it on down. And that gets the kids to where not only are they remembering it, they know it's math time and they know what they're going to learn and they'll go home and even sing it to their parents. You'll see them out on the playground and they'll be uh, singing the song out there. So when you're excited, they get excited. All right, tip number three, we're moving fast. This has been my biggest downfall. Remember when you are cleaning to when in doubt, throw it out. If it's been around and you don't know if you're gonna use it, just throw it out. Or you can use the um, not used all year, give it to someone dear. Get rid of it. If you haven't used it all year long, 
chances are you're not going to use it. I have taught uh, kindergarten, pre-K, first grade, second grade, third grade, and I hang on to way too much stuff and I accumulated over the years and it was not fun to get rid of everything because I thought that I would need it again and guess what? I really didn't. So um, make sure that you throw things that you don't use. Keep your items like remote controls or iPods in the same spot every day. Nothing is worse than waiting for your teacher to find their materials before a lesson starts. And it also leads to kids getting up out of their seat to go and look for your things that you should have known where they were. Another tip would be to clean your desk, your own desk, at, at like the last 10 minutes of the day. I do it while my kids are eating snack. Last 10 minutes of the day, I either have them clean or they're eating snack and I clean my desk. A cluttered desk is a sign of a cluttered mind. So clean your desk. Invest in some storage bins. If you have a lot of things and they're out in the open, get some storage bins. It also helps if you have to move classrooms to have the storage bins. They are worth it. Keep a routine in place every day for cleanup time with your students and for you to, to be organized. Have some kind of routine of how you want your classroom to look every day and stick to it. Tip number four. Okay, this is my last and final tip for you. Um, the most important one though, I feel like, is to set goals. Set goals for yourself and even have students, have your students set goals for themselves. I was lucky enough one time to meet Tommy DiPaolo who was, um, who wrote, he's the author of Streganona and he made all of the teachers in his conference promise that we would never let one day go by without reading to our students. So I, I put that on my goal list at school and I'm pretty good with sticking to it unless it's a field trip or something like that but I also have it on what I call my window of opportunity. I have it up there and it says, let's see, it says read a book every day to your students. So I suggest if you have a goal like that you'll stick to it more likely if you have it somewhere where you can see it all the time. If you can't see it, you can't reach it. Think about it. How did you get your breakfast today? Did you have to think about what you were going to eat? Did you have to think about how to make coffee? Did you have to figure out how you were going to come to my video today? Was there something, some kind of action that you took to get to my video? Um, anytime that you can see something, you're more likely to achieve it. So you, I totally believe in uh, setting goals and using vision boards and stuff like that to help me reach them. So that's it. Okay. Today's Teaching Tips with Teacher's Brain is over, and thank you so much for sticking around, because the more you know, the more you're going to grow.